Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're gonna go over how to list all the commits inside a Git repository and look at extra bits of information for every commit. So for this example, I have this folder here called My Project. And inside, I will open a new git bash window. Now notice how I've already initialized git inside of this folder. Okay, so we're free to use our git commands. And we'll start off with git status just to see that there is nothing in the working directory and there's nothing in the staging area. For this example, we're going to need a couple of commits. So I will add a new file and I will call it my code. I do git status. You'll see that that change is now in the working directory. We'll go ahead and add it to the staging area. Okay. Now that it's in the staging area, we'll go ahead and create our commit. And for the commit message, I'm just going to type in first commit. Normally, I wouldn't write a commit message like this. Obviously, it's not very descriptive, but for this example, it's perfect. So I'll just type in first commit, press enter, and there you go. We've created our first commit. All right. Let's go ahead and add another text file on here. Call it my code 2. That changes in the working directory. We'll go ahead and add it to the staging area. Okay. And then here we'll create our second commit. All right, now we have two commits. Now let's just uh, let's just create one more commit. So same thing. You know, create a new file, call it my code 3. Changes in the working directory. Go ahead and add that to the staging area. And now that's in now that it's in the staging area, we'll go ahead and create our third commit. Okay. All right. So we we've obviously created the three commits here. We we know what's going on, we know how many commits we have, all this stuff. Pretty cool. Now, if you have another developer come in and help you on the project, they're not always going to know how many commits you have uh, or what even went into every commit, right? So luckily, there is a git command that will let you list all the commits and give you more information uh, on each and every commit on there. And this command is called git log, okay? So if I type in git log and I press enter, you'll see that it gives me all this information here. Okay. So there are basically three blocks of text here. Okay. And each block belongs to a commit. So let's go over all the different pieces of information that this provides. So first you'll notice that here in the yellow text, it says commit followed by a series of characters, right? Bunch of numbers and stuff. This right here is called the commit ID. So every commit is unique, yeah? So every commit needs a unique uh, identifier. So that's what this commit ID is. It's a unique identifier uh, for this, you know, specific commit. You'll notice that they're all different. So this first commit here, its commit ID starts with 502A. The second commit, you'll see that it starts with F54C. And the third commit, it's 0C97, right? And this, uh, these commit IDs are very helpful um, in other git commands. So there are some commands that allow you to revert the changes or uh, delete and undo a lot of these commits. So if you need to do any of that, it'll, you know, it'll uh, require you to provide this a commit ID. So it'll need to know exactly which commit you're referring to, right? 
if you're looking to undo a commit, you know, you'll need to provide the commit ID. All right. So that's that. Uh, this right here is the author. So uh, obviously, you know, this I created all three commits. So you'll see that the author here is all the same. Uh, but this is very helpful in case you have any questions on the changes that went into that commit. Uh, and so you'll know uh, <laughs> you'll know who to blame if something is wrong, or if you just have any questions, you'd always reach out to them too if they um, if they provided their email on here and they set it up correctly. All right, and then here, of course, is the timestamp. Today is October fourteenth, two thousand one, and uh, you know that's that's what it shows on here. We've created the commits back to back, which is why the timestamps are so similar. Okay, but the uh, timestamps are very helpful if you need to know exactly when you know a change was made. Uh, you're trying to compare it with maybe other stuff that you uh, did on that date. And you're trying to figure stuff out. So timestamps are always very very useful. Uh, and then this right here, of course, is the commit message, right? So the commit message is supposed to give good description of the changes. Uh, that are inside of that commit. Okay. All right. So uh, this is all very nice, but when you're dealing with a very old project, yeah, when you're dealing with a very old project that has dozens and dozens, maybe even hundreds of commits, okay, you don't always need to look at all this information. Sometimes you need a more condensed version of it. And so that's why we have git log dash dash one line and this is basically uh, like I said a condensed version of git log so uh, you'll notice that it shows us basically the same information minus the author and the date right so we don't always need to look at the author and the date uh, but it does show us the commit message which which is very important and the commit ID You'll see that the commit ID has been shortened to only a few characters instead of this whole thing. And the reason for that is because when you need to specify the commit ID in another git command, you don't always need to provide the whole thing, right? Just providing the first couple of characters, maybe first six or eight characters, is more than enough um, to specify that this is the commit that you're referring to, okay? So this is always very helpful. Uh, you know, like I said, if you have uh, lots of commits, uh, the project has lots of commits, this is a um, um, perfect option just to look at everything in a more condensed version. So uh, sometimes, right, sometimes you actually need more information than, than what's in here. So luckily there is a long version of Git uh, I'm sorry, a, a long version of git log. And um, for that, you would type in git log dash dash stat. Okay. And when you press enter, it'll give you all this information here. Now, it looks very similar to the original git log, right? Except this stuff down here. Okay. So we still get the commit ID, the full commit ID, the author, the date and the commit message, but now we have this right here. And basically what this is, is it gives you more information as to what changes are inside of that commit. So you'll you'll see here that uh, the file that was modified, okay, or, you know, created in this case, was mycode3.txt, right? So that's the one that we created on the third commit. This number here is basically, it's a tally of the changes that were made to that file. So if I had added, um, you know, new lines of code, if I, if I had added two lines of code, this right here would show a two, and it would show uh, two plus signs on here, okay? Uh, this basically says, you know, one file changed, it wasn't modified or anything, it was just added, right? And uh, we can tell that that's the case because here it says zero insertions, meaning 
um, zero lines of code were added and zero deletions, meaning zero lines of code were deleted. And that is the case, right? Because these files are completely empty, right? And that's why it's uh, showing zero, zero on all of them, okay? So this is very helpful um, if the commit message isn't enough to give you an idea of, you know, the changes that are inside of that commit, you could always use this version of git log to get a better idea of what's actually inside of that commit. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, remember how I said that this commit ID uniquely identifies that commit. So one of the, one of the uh, commands that you can do to specify a commit, okay, is actually git log. Um, and here I'm just going to give you an example. So if I copy the first couple of characters here of the second commit, and I type in git log, and I paste the ID, and I press enter, okay, you'll see that it gives me the first and second commit. So it gives me the uh, the one that I specified and then the one right, you know, the one right before that one, right? So if I were to do git log and specify the third commit, so if I do git log and specify the third commit on here, you'll see that it brings up the third one, but also the ones right before it. So second, first. And then of course, if I do git log and I specify the first commit, it's only, um, it's only gonna show me the first one, right? So git log 502AE, 502AE, it'll only show me the first one and you know, anything, there isn't anything before it, so it's only going to show that one, okay? Um, another way to bring up commits is to specify how far back you want to go from the last one. So, uh, obviously, we have three commits here, right? So, if I do git log dash two, and I press enter, okay, you'll see that it basically uh, is just telling Git, hey, show me the last two commits, okay? The last two commits. So the last two were the third commit and the second commit, right? And if I were to do, say, git log dash three, this is saying, hey, show me the last three commits. Of course, that's going to show all of them, right? Because we only have three commits. And if we were to do git log dash one, of course, that'll show me the last one, which is the third commit, okay? And if you try to do like dash four, it'll give you, um, well, I guess it'll give you the last three. Won't give you an error, but if you were to provide like a zero, then, you know, it won't give you anything uh, based off of that. Okay, so these are just ways to, to bring up uh, different commits in case you need to look at them and look at different pieces of information for them. All right. Okay, so uh, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks.